Josh, do you have any sense yet whether Bradley can be an effective edge rusher playing with a huge thing on his hands? Well, I think, you know, he, he's dealing with a number of issues and he's, he's working hard to get, um, you know, to a position where he can help us. Uh, so I would say we're in a day-to-day -day, uh, category there. I mean, obviously there's things that you can um, do to help, um, you know, certain situations if you're limited with one hand. Uh, but um, I know he's working hard to get back and we'll kind of see where that, that falls at the end of the week. Um, uh, a lot has changed since the first time you played the Patriots in week one. I remember even before then, I was talking to Landon saying that you know, the core of our defense is going to be what it is, but obviously you have to evolve from year to year. How do you think this unit has evolved, especially given the circumstances of the injuries that you face this year? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of similarities, like, you know, as far as schematically and game planning, and, you know, we're always, you know, whether – you know, the results are what we want or not. You know, I, I think the similarities have been, uh, you know, we're always trying to game plan opponents. We're always trying to m take something away and attack something. I think that's always been the case. Um, you know, uh, we've had some guys that, uh, you know, have gotten more experience as the years went on. Uh, you know, obviously, Cater, Keon, uh, McKinley, um, Elijah's out there from time to time. You know, um, you know, but I, I would say the majority, you know, in the front shifts a little bit based on people that they, that you lose, and um, and at the end of the day, you look at what you have available to you and what the offense is doing, and again, it goes right back to okay, what can we take away? What can we try to attack? And what's the best way to try to win the game? I know that you want to, you know, stick to like you said, like sticking to your core philosophies, but um, in a game, the trenching where you know your starting quarterback probably um, isn't going to be planned, you kind of ask more of, of the defense? No, I, I think our job's pretty much always the same. I mean, and a lot of times I know this is probably like, you know, you're so focused on your side of the ball and your responsibility that sometimes you, you have very little idea of what's going on on the other side. Now, there's sometimes when score will dictate or time in the game will dictate how you, how you would play. So you're very aware, situational. But at the end of the day, regardless of what the offense is doing one way or the other, our job is to get off the field and get them the ball. And, and that's kind of the way we approach it and look at it. Danny, when you look at the pass rush trio of Chubb, Phillips, and uh, Ingram, how do you know whether they've been sufficiently disruptive? How do you know when they've had a successful game? Well, yeah, I, I think there's a number of things that go into that. Uh, one, you know, you know, I, the, the obvious that everybody looks at is usually stack a sacks or quarterback hits. You know, in those situations, uh, sometimes you got to look at you know what the offense is doing, how quick the ball's coming out. Um, you know, uh, are there batted balls in those situations? Uh, are we close to that? Uh, are you forcing a quarterback to you know make a good throw, a good catch? I mean, like. Look, week in and week out, it's you're never a hundred percent where you're going. You know, every play for you is good, um, so you got to be able to handle, you know, um, a little bit of adversity, I guess you'd call it. But the reality of it is, is like what you're trying to do is not give them anything easy. You're not trying to have, you know, guys running wide open in space. You're not trying to have, um, you know, gaping gaps open in the run game. Uh, you know. But, like, you know, when you're competitive in coverage and, you know, they make a good throw, a good catch, you know, that happens. You know, when, you know, you, you need to stop them for a three-yard gain and it's a two-yard gain and, you know, he, they lean in and, you know, they're, they're good players on the other side of the ball too. They make plays. That's part of the game. But the reality of it is, you know, over, over the course of a 60-minute game, if you make it tough and difficult and don't beat yourself – uh, I think that puts you in the best position to win. When you game plan for a physical runner like Ramondre Stevenson, what are some of the key teaching points to making sure your players get him down? Yeah, it's it's really – and, I mean, look, we faced a lot of good backs all year, you know, whether it's, you know, Chubb, Cook. Uh, I mean, it's it's the same. you got to get all – all 11 guys are involved in the run game, and we got to get all 11 guys of the ball, and, the, and they're going to do things that – to try to create angles on our front seven. They're going to do things to try to stress our uh, overhangs uh, in the C-gap and on the perimeter. 
Uh, so I, it's all 11 guys involved, and we got to do a good job of tackling, and we got to do a good job of pursuit so guys can take shots and, uh, you know, ultimately get the, the ball carrier on the ground. Josh, why do you feel like you all as a group haven't gotten to the quarterback enough with four man rushes specifically? Has that been something that's below, that has been below your expectations this season? I'm trying to. Yeah, just, can you say that again? Because because yeah, uh, I think you I think you said it that. Seems, it seems that I had a feeling there. That one reason why coaches blitz. There are several reasons, but one reason is if you got to the quarterback with four man rushes consistently, it, a team might not need to blitz as much. Have you gotten to the quarterback with four man rushes as much as you would have hoped this season? And if not, beyond Ogba's injury, any sense as to why you haven't? Yeah, I would say like look. A lot of times when you're when you're running pressures, you're trying to run pressures to beat protections, and you know you just don't run them in there and go, okay, well we're we're sending an extra guy, but he's going to run into this guy. You, you you try to set it up so where you can beat the protection, and then obviously you have base calls where you, where you play, um, you know you drop more guys in coverage, and you know traditionally I, I would say most teams rush four. Um, and a lot of times it depends on what the offense is doing. You know, are are they taking you know, are they taking a five, a st seven step drop? Is the quarterback you know, is he, is he getting the ball out on time? Is he throwing it off a you know a second hitch? I, I think there's times when you know you have good coverage and, and the quarterback's holding on the ball a little bit and you don't get there. Those are times that you'd be disappointed. There's other times when you rush and you may win on a rush and it's like okay the ball's out quick. So I think there's so many variables into that. And the reality of it is, is you're trying to create pressure on the offensive line and the quarterback. And you got to do a good job of marrying that, the coverage with the front. And the, you're trying to do that over a 60 minute period to ultimately give yourself a chance to win the game. So like, you know, look, you know, I, I don't think there is, you sit there and you reflect on the whole season. Like, that's not how it works. Like how it works is, is like, like today, for example, we, we go out there and we practice. It won't be perfect, okay? But, like, what's going to happen is is every rep that we take, it's an opportunity to learn. Right, wrong, or indifferent, whatever will happen, you're going to learn from that opportunity, and you're just gaining information as you go. And, and ultimately what you're trying to do is put the players in the best position to succeed, and you're trying to get them to understand things that they can anticipate so they can play faster and play better. And, I mean, you do that on a daily basis, and that really goes until the clock hits zeros on Sunday. And then once it hits zeros on Sunday, you know, we talked about this before, there's probably a 10-minute period, and then after that, you're, you're on to the next opponent. So it's not like you sit there and go, ah, you know, this, that. You, you try to learn from it, and you, you move forward. You forge forward. And that's, you know, that's probably, I don't know if that's hard to understand, but, like, that – that's really what happens, like on a daily basis, like yesterday, you know, whether we're in the meeting room or we're in the walkthrough, you know, it's and again, it's not perfect. Sometimes, we, you know, OK, we miss this or we miss that. And then you go, OK, we correct this. And then at the end of the week, you make a decision going, all right, we didn't really have this. We probably shouldn't do that because it doesn't put us in the best position to succeed, even though on paper it might schematically be a good thing. So, so it's not been the cases here where you've said, damn, our four-man rush is just not getting to the quarterback enough. That, that hasn't been something that's, that's irked you this year? No, I, I'm not wired that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't look, that, that's what I'm trying to explain. I, it, it doesn't, doesn't go like, you know, it's like, you know, again, like, okay, say maybe we're a hair off on our technique or on our coverage, you know, and it's like you don't go – oh, man, if we'd have done this, this would have been that. You'd be like, okay, you know, can we teach this better? Can we coach it better? Um, and how do we get better for the next week? You know, and again, and that, that process, like I said, doesn't stop until the clock's hit zero of that given week. And then you, and you move on. And then, like, obviously each week you're trying to do what you can to win the game and put yourself in position to keep playing. And so I don't, you know, stats – you know, this, that, you, you ultimately, you know, you're just trying to find things that, that the players feel comfortable with, that we feel comfortable with uh, against the opponent, and that we feel like give, up, give us the best chance to win. So, like, all that other stuff, to me, that would be a waste of time. I mean, I heard a long time ago, it's probably a pretty good saying, like, 
if you're always living in the past, okay, that's guilt or depression. And if you're living in the future, that's anxiety or worry. And anywhere in the future or the past is insanity if you're staying in those. So I think, I think to be in the present, you, you learn from the past, you see how you can get it better, and you just take it day by day. And I, th I think that's how we look at it. I don't look at, you know, like, okay, this is that, this is this. I mean, you look at waves, you can improve everything, whether it's four-man rush, whether it's a pressure, how, how can we beat schemes, you know, the, those, you know, how can we play best base techniques better versus the run? I think you look at all those things. But I don't think you, you – again, to me, that would be guilt or depression if you're sitting there looking at all that other stuff. And then if you're worried about the future, then – you know, that's anxiety, and I don't think that's any way to live. Danny, having said that, even living in the moment. That's, twi that's twice, Danny. <laughs> Be that as it may. I'm sorry. I'm slipping. Yeah, I, I, no, that's, that's, that's okay. I, and, hey, and I know I'm losing my hair. I, I get that. I'm getting older. But I, I didn't think I lost that much. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Um, having said that, living in the moment, are your heads spinning a little bit as coaches because – you are on a four-game losing streak, and you were eight and three, and and life was better at that moment. What is the mentality of the coaching staff right now? No, I think we're excited for the opportunity in front of us. I don't. I, you, look, does losing suck? Yes, a hundred percent. Does playing on Christmas and having to leave early Christmas morning, leaving your daughter there, and then going to play a game and losing the game, does that suck? Yeah, hundred percent. Like that ain't good. And like losing, like you put. You know, the coaching staff, I mean, you know, put 18 hours in a, a day trying to make sure that we get things right. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel good. It's a gut punch when you don't. But, like, it's not, you know, if you sit there and that's what I guess that's the point I'm trying to get across. If you sit there and dwell on those things, I, I really think that's a losing mentality. Probably not just for football coaching, probably life in general, you know. And, I, I you know, I, that's – we're excited for the opportunity this week. And I mean, we're, we are working hard, uh, you know, and our focus is going to be is to have a good, you know, we've already had one meeting. We've got another meeting coming up. We're going to have a good meeting there. We're going to have a good walkthrough, uh, you know, and then we're going to have a good practice like that. And the reality of it is we're, we're striving for perfection, which we know we're going to fall short. But the reality of it is we can learn from, you know, whatever mistakes we make. And then ultimately, as a coaching staff, you just got to make decisions going, Okay, these calls, this structure puts us in the best position to win. These ones, you know, even though maybe schematically on paper it looks good, maybe we don't have it. So, and I mean, I think that's, that's, that's how you approach it. Like, I don't, you know, whether you're winning, losing, you know, and I, we, we literally had that conversation. It's the same week in and week out. It is. And then the reality of it is, I understand, like, you, you guys have got a job to do and stories to write and, you know, things like that. But, like, when, when you're in it, like, that's part of your job is to block all that out. And it really doesn't matter at the task at hand. And, you know, I, I couldn't be any happier with the opportunity we have this week. Josh, as an opposing D.C., what stands out to you about Mac Jones? Um, you know, he's a competitive player. Uh, you know, obviously um, – you know, uh, I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of things that you see on film that, that they're well schooled in um, and they're looking for certain opportunities. Um, you know, obviously uh, the Vegas game comes to mind. Uh, Vegas was showing a max blitz look, which you knew that they were going to pop out of that blitz um, based on the safety. So he saw the safety. He checked the play. Happened twice in the game. Uh, one time they hit him for a big play. The other time they missed the throw. Both plays should have been touchdowns. So, like, you know, his his awareness and understanding of things that, that are going on in the game, I, I think, are, you know, at, at a high level. And, uh, you know, I think he has some escapability in the pocket. He keeps his eyes downfield. Uh, I think, you know, they have guys that have made plays all year, um, you know, and I think he's willing to throw, throw, throw the ball to all of them. And... Um, you know, and then he, he has the ability, you know, you show pressure one side, he'll, he'll check the play. Like, you know, he usually gets them in the right plays. You don't, you don't see him, like, running into a down safety very often, you know. So uh, I think, you know, the things that they're doing over there schematically, you know, you got to be very careful of showing them something, you know, that you've done over and over again because they'll probably have something schemed up for it. 
And I think the Vegas was uh, – that game was a perfect example of it. And, you know, I know they got one big gain on it, but the reality of it is they probably should have scored on it both times. 